Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. This is RUD, my melty brain spinner. It is a robot that spins at a very, very high speed, and by tracking where it is, it can translate around the arena while it is spinning. However, in its last fights, it didn't really translate very well, and the brain inside of it turned off a couple of times. So we're going to try and fix that by upgrading the electronics, starting with these. So yes, we're putting an accelerometer into my melty brains for the first time. This should be a massive step up in how the melty brain tracks its heading and also should hopefully deal with some of the weirdness that I was dealing with in RUD at the last event. I think that what was happening with some of the heading weirdness was that there is a signal between the ESC and the brain and that was going awry and it was not actually knowing how fast the robot was spinning causing the heading to not work. So by putting an accelerometer in and having this talk directly to the brain, hopefully we fix some of that issue. But of course, to get this into the robot, we need to attach it to a brand new Teensy 4, and that is where PCBWay comes in. They have provided two very cool looking PCBs, and these are basically alternate ways of attaching the two things together that we need to, and then adding some extra components around it as well. So we need to get these two things on here. This is the Teensy 4. It is a very, very fast microcontroller, which is the brain of a melty brain. And then we have the accelerometer. Now I'm gonna focus on the long thin version here. This particular board we're going to talk about in a future video, but I do really like how both of these have come out. These are a very odd shape, but these have come out absolutely beautifully and both sets should do the job we want. Now, I'll also say that these are very different to the last set of boards that I got, which came from PCBWay as well and looked like this. These have a full power regulation set up on them. And in this particular case, I want these to be fairly multi-use. So we're going to be looking at putting these boards into other robots in the future. So I didn't want to be locked into using this power distribution setup in a future build. So I've gone and I've simplified the design of these down. These are also designed in such a way that the accelerometer ends up sitting very, very close to the center of rotation of the robot. So these holes here are approximately on line with the center of rotation of the melty brain. That is so that we don't flood the accelerometer. This accelerometer in particular can handle up to 400 Gs. However, when a melty brain is spinning very, very fast and I want mine to spin about 2000 RPM, you hit 400 G very, very soon into the movement out. The further out you are, the more G you experience. And yeah, the further out you get, the, the faster you hit that 400 G limit. So we're gonna go quite in close to make sure that we can see the melty as it spins at ridiculously high speeds. But of course, to actually use this, we're going to need to solder it all together first. So we're gonna melt on some resistors for the LED. Then we're gonna solder in the LED, add a couple of connectors, and then of course the stars of the show, the accelerometer and the Teensy 4. Okay, that is our electronics done. Now normally the next step would be to take it and put it into RUD, cut some holes in the bottom here so that we could mount everything up with all of the bolt holes that we've got on this thing. Uh, however, safety is a big concern with melty brains because you need to get the whole robot spinning very, very quickly. And as we learned in the last fights, uh, things can break off and fly in many different directions. Now, the biggest space I have to test this on currently looks like this, which is far too open and exposed for me to do that testing. So we're going to do something a little bit different and I've printed some parts, which are these. Now, this is a very interesting little system I've devised here. So first of all, we've got a nice little TPU part that just sits underneath all of this and allows me to bolt the whole thing down flat because as you can see there's lots and lots of solder connections connections down here and those would not sit flat if I just bolted all this in so we've got a nice little spacer then the actual meat of this is these three parts so we have a body with a lid and a bar down here and these fit on this so the whole idea is that the motor connects there 
and then there. And we're going to then put all of the Mounty electronics in here. And so effectively, this thing is going to spin itself. This motor is gonna be connected to an ESC, connected to this board, basically the same way the drive works on RUD currently, but this will give us a more stable melty heading as well, because rather than having to deal with all of the inconsistencies with hardware that happen when you spin the entire robot round uh, using wheels, we're just gonna spin the robot in this case, directly from the motor. So we'll be able to throttle the speed up and down as we need to and get a more stable spin out of this, hopefully. So we're in the test box right now. Yeah, we're just gonna ignore the amount of wiring mess that is inside this thing and the fact that it's currently duct taped to the bottom of my test box. And we're just gonna send it and see what happens. So I need to power up my transmitter. Okay. The light changing means that it now understands where we are and what it's trying to do. And that beep means that the ESC is armed, so we should be able to hit it into melty mode. Okay, it spins. Uh, oh, that's probably not good. Hmm, and that heading is not at all accurate, so with a bit of adjustment on it, it's not actually getting anywhere. Oh, so that rocking is really not good. I wonder if I can go a little faster, and get it to stabilize. Mm. No, that's not working. <laughs> okay, it is time for take two. And uh, you can see I've upgraded the setup a little bit. I've added some weight. I've attached the actual melty body or the melty body to an old 13 kilo weapon bar or a weapon bar for a 13 kilo robot. Uh, this should give everything a little bit more mass and hopefully make it a little bit more stable, fingers crossed. Uh, I've also duct taped some nuts to the outside, which might help with our wobbling issue. I think it's because the battery's on the far side. So I've added these nuts to try and like offset the weight of those. Hopefully the nuts don't just go flying off when I spin this up, but that's why we're in the test box and uh, everything is hopefully safe. Um, I still have safety glasses on behind the camera as well, just because, you know, I, I, I don't know what's about to happen and better safe than sorry. All right, that's enough uh, talking about it. Let's do it. Three, two, one, melty mode. Okay, that's a lot more stable, but the heading light is very, very bad. So, I guess now we need to try and work out a calibration mode of some form. Okay, we are back again. I think I've got a calibration mode kind of sorted. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to put it into a calibration mode on my joystick here, and then I'm going to use this position sensor to change the amount of distance that the accelerometer is away from the center, or at least it thinks it is. Uh, this is a trick given to me by James of Broken Link Robotics. I will throw you a link to his channel down below. Uh, hopefully this works. Let's find out. Uh, the scary thing about doing this test though is that the robot is going to take over the spin speed. I've given it a third of max throttle. Hopefully that's not too much, but it should. When I flick this throttle into the middle, it should blink at us a couple of times and then just start to spin the whole thing up. Fingers crossed. Blinks. Uh, it should. Now I'll be setting a melty heading. That's not good. Hmm. Okay. We didn't get a melty heading there. Uh, and I need to attach that nut again because apparently that was actually helping. <laughs> Time for round two. Three, two, one.
I think that's about as good as I'm going to do. I'm going to try something here. Okay. So that should have saved the new calibration data. So let's try it out. Well, oh, okay. Do we need a decent amount of adjustment here? Let's let's spin up a little faster. Okay. So we still need some adjustment and some fine tuning because that's not quite working out for us. Very nearly there. I just need to make a very few small changes to the code, I think and we'll basically be where we need to be. That's interesting. Okay, here we go for round three. I've given myself less range on one of the dials and more range on the other, and hopefully between the pair of those, we'll get something that actually works here. Now, robot is powered up correctly. We're not gonna even bother going into melty mode right now because it's not gonna do anything. We know it's not gonna work. So we're gonna go straight into the test mode. Okay, I think that's a lot better. So we're gonna save that. We're gonna go into melty mode. We're gonna adjust our heading stick a little. Okay, I'm seeing three lights. Uh, I'm getting vibration, let's back it down a touch. Uh, Look at that! Uh, 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 come on, come back, come back to me. Oh, I don't know if that's picking up on camera at all, but that is steady. That is the most steady melty heading I think I've ever had. Uh, 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 ah, uh, but it's very fine. I can like adjust out of it real easily. I need to kind of try and keep it in spot. Oh, that's so cool! Alright, let's... Alright, so if we push up, yeah, so the accelerometer is not doing its job properly because faster things need more adjustment to get to work. But that is still working. Again, I don't know how well this is picking up on camera. I might need to change the angle of the camera here. Okay. I think this is about as good as I'm going to get on the camera. You can kind of see that the light starts here and ends over there. Uh, that is basically meaning that the heading is fairly rock solid in like this direction over here. Uh, that is about as good as I can get it. I think I could, it's about as good as the camera is going to do. Oh, and it started to drift. There at. That's not good. Okay, yeah, I bumped the, the stick as I was talking uh, and I have put it out of mode now. That is interesting. Okay, I think I'm going to need to fine tune this a little bit more, but that is going to be a very, very long and involved process, I think. Okay, and there we have it. We are back out of the test box. I have powered everything down. I've made everything safe. I've looked at the calibration data and the calibration data pushed the accelerometer from, well, in software from being eight millimeters away from the center to basically nine millimeters away from the center, which is an interesting thing that it needs to be kind of that far away to actually get a semi-decent heading out of this. I did get some kind of heading, but I still needed some level of tram, which meant that as the robot spins up and spins up further, I'm gonna to need to keep adding more and more kind of offset to keep the heading where I want it to be. So there's gonna be a lot of time in my near future sitting down and just working on this thing, getting the calibration exactly as I want it to. I think I'm also probably gonna sit down and I'm gonna average out some of the accelerometer values because from 
from looking at the accelerometer values that I'm getting out of this, every now and again, it just gets one really big spike. So what I kind of want to do is let the accelerometer get up to speed, take a couple of readings off of it, and then just start averaging everything and taking the new value as less important than the old values, which means that it's gonna change very slowly over time and those big spikes aren't gonna throw off the heading quite as much. And I think it was those big spikes that were causing the calibration routine to go from having a nice little heading to having like a weird and wild heading. Uh, so I wanna mess with some of that stuff, but that is gonna be a lot of trial and error, so I'm gonna do that all off camera but you now see what I'm doing, what I'm using to get uh, some idea of how my melty brain is going to work. I'll probably end up redesigning the chassis because as you can see, I did a little bit of extra testing off camera and I lost one of these nuts. So I'm going to redesign this little chassis so I can balance it a little bit easier and in a way that I'm not gonna be losing things because they're just held on with duct tape. Anyway, that is gonna be it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed that one and I will see you in the next video.